And you reckon using three-quarter ounce CSM will save sufficient weight? Unidirectional mat will give us a saving, too. And uh, sandwich foam. You've got a maximum of what? Ten, twelve layers? Areas of high stress would get a dozen coats. When a vessel's being bounded hard, all of it's under stress. Some more than others. Uh, and some of it's under stress even when the boat's not being driven. You know, rigging loads, tabernacles, pull pits, push pits, the stem, the stern. The layers are piled on wherever testing and experience are shown it's necessary. A bit undignified. Rather dramatic, I'd say. There's no keel, is there? The keel's bolted on last. I find that hard to swallow. The keel was the first thing laid. That was the foundation stone. It's all back to front, don't we? It's applying technology. If you wanted to build a boat 45 foot long in the old-fashioned way, say cedar, it'd take weeks, not days, cost two or three times as much. And she displaced a dam site more than 12 and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, well, it would be no bad thing. Give her a bit of stability. We get all the stability we need through Mr. Howard's design characteristics. Come on board. Barracuda keel keelhousing cause you any difficulties with the interior layout? Nothing we can't handle. And the deck goes on when everything's inside? Nearly everything, yes. Well, why isn't this whole lot fiberglass? It could be. Well, people like wood. There's no doubt about it. They much prefer to live with it. That's right, Tom. Because it has a warmth, a naturalness. Wood is a living material, and a boat is a living thing. Well, I'm not being sentimental. Uh, by that, I mean she's the sum total of all the men who worked on her, sawed and steamed her planks and shaved her timbers. When she's running before the wind, that's what you feel beneath your feet. What's a man going to feel when he's standing on this thing, eh? The scratching of an accountant's pen? You might just as well be turning out bathtubs. We do. We've got another factory just down the road. <laughs> Quarters. Hello, darling. Hello, Arne. It's good to see you, Abby. How are you, darling? Very well. Uh, let me introduce you to Leo. I've already done it. Arne, this is Leo Howard. He's been a very good friend to me. Yeah, I guess you have. Oh, you a lot, thanks. Leo likes helping damsels in distress. Don't patronize him, Mother. I wasn't patronizing, Abby. You're far too sensitive. I was being complimentary. You took it as a compliment, didn't you, Leo? Yes. There you are. He's being polite. Can I see the baby? Oh, Warren, yes, of course. He's here. He's sleeping. Can't see much of him. You'll be able to hear him soon. For someone so small, he makes a lot of noise. Isn't that right, Leo? Yeah, he's got lungs on him, no doubt about it. Well, what about some tea? Oh, I thought we might go out for tea, darling. No, thanks. But I've arranged it. I don't want to go out. Not just yet. Not uh, for tea. Maybe we ought not. We'd have to wake the baby. Oh, Leo can stay here. He won't mind. Not that Leo's not your maid. I I'm mine. I know that, darling, but he won't mind. Really, he won't. Why don't you ask me, Mrs. Urquhart? I am in the room. Would you mind, Leo? No. There you are. 
I'm not going anywhere. Listen, maybe I should. No, 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 don't leave on my account. Well, you two have got things to discuss. My room's just. No, I think you ought to stay. Can't we just have coffee or something? I don't need anything fancy. You got any coffee? Instant. Great. Oh, Aaron, you didn't come all that distance just to sit in this sun. Yes, Mother? Abby, it is rather squalid. Oh, it's fine, really. Aaron doesn't like it. Let him say so. Stop putting words into other people's mouths. I was only trying to help, darling. Yes, well, that all seems quite straightforward. Right. Now, shell it. Shell it. Well, of course, we have the odd item against him, but... You know, I think we would be better if we just bought him off. I should imagine for a few hundred he'll stop making a nuisance of himself. A few hundred? Yeah. You give him a few hundred, he'll want a few thousand and more and still more. We'd never get rid of him. No, 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 Gerald, we owe him nothing. You put pressure on him. That's the only language he understands. Mr. Masters is here to see you, sir. Ah, Ken. Evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Kenneth. You're early. Uh, if there's nothing else, Mr. Frey, I think I'll be going home. No, that'll be all. Thank you, Emma. Good thank night. You. Good night. Good night, Good night. Emma. Thank you. Well, I brought something along I think might interest you. So you said. Not another boat garage site, I trust. Several hundred acres. Well, of course, there are plenty of parcels of land that size for sale, but the trouble is none of them have the coastal frontage we require. Oh, this has. Where is it? Well, as it happens, quite close. Is this a private set? It's not a sale. But it is on the coast. Coast and inlet, yeah. This land is on the market. No. Well, what makes you think it's available? May I? Please. Now, it's always been regarded as a nature reserve. Oh, surely this is National Trust property. No, I've been doing some checking. Belongs to the local council. Well, what makes you think they'd be prepared to put it on the market? Well, they weren't. Not yet, anyway. But when they do, prompted by us, we'll have all the tenders worked out. How? Oh. I'm a local man with local friends. Well, this could be of some interest. Well, it certainly is large. How many acres, did you say? 837. You know, I know this area. There's nothing but dunes and birds, nothing much else. Has it got potential? Could have. It'll take some swinging. Well, I bought it to you first, Charles. Yes, I'm glad you did, Ken. Thank you. I mean, it's not the sort of thing I could handle myself, so I was thinking in terms of a partnership or forming a development company. You know, I think this might be worth taking a look at at least, don't you, Gerald? Mm -hmm. yeah, what sort of partnership did you have in mind, Ken? I think the issue is very simple. There are many issues. I mean the one with the highest priority. Highest priority for you? I'm putting the baby at the top of the list. And I think the best thing for him and for you is to get out of this awful place. Where would we go? Well, home, darling, naturally. This is my home. Abby, I'm with you. You know that. But you've got to admit it. It, it isn't pleasant. I think I ought to go. You can't go anywhere, Leo, and it seems to me like you're part of this. Going home would be like going backwards. It'll only be until things get themselves sorted out. Anyway, I'll be staying there. Think of the time we'd waste visiting each other. It does make sense, Abby. Yeah. I know. Oh, thank goodness that's all arranged at last. Well, come on, darling. Pack whatever it is you both need. There's no point in staying here a moment longer than necessary. I've got a lot of stuff. Well, you can collect them some other time. Tomorrow. Abby, it'll be for the best. You'll see. And then we're going to Goodwood. It's Aztec Boy's first race. It's a £2,000 race, and they reckon that he has a chance. I'm praying that he'll win. He's put me in a terrible debt. He's cost a fortune. Don't you remember him, Lynn? I own 25% of him. I seem to be feeding one hundred. Remember the flying fish, Lynn? I'm sorry, flying what? It was our boat. Bermudan sloop. What? Well, it's a yacht, you know. We used to sail her. Don't you remember her? No. I think perhaps we'd better go. Let Lynn rest. No. Think, Lynn, think. We sailed her, raced her. We used to sleep on board and cook and... and... Please, Lynn, concentrate. On what? Leo. If you can't remember anything, at least remember that. Leo, she can't. I'm sorry. Well, you tried. I know I did. And that wasn't any good either. Well, if we can't jog our memory, what will? 